Ebro in the morning on Hot 97. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, a man I know through Cypher Sounds mostly, but then mostly we become cool because of hating Donald Trump on social media. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Uh, you got on Ebro, Laura Stiles, and, and Rosenberg. Judah Friedland. Yeah. Thank you. Judah Friedland. World champion. Thank you. World champion. Yeah. Um, you may know him from 30 Rock, too. Yeah. yeah. I uh, I haven't seen that show, but I heard it was pretty good. So, <laughs> people, uh, You yeah. heard that people like it? Yeah, I heard that. I heard they were digging it. Yeah. <laughs> so so let's, let's get right to it, man. You yeah. are currently on the Making America Laugh Again run. Uh, well, I mean, I don't think America ever stopped laughing. I think we're a very entertaining country. You okay. know, you can, you can say all the problems we have, but you got to admit we're pretty entertaining. And we talk much. a lot of shit. And we make yeah. fun of ourselves. We yeah. do pretty good. Well, I don't know. I think we need to do more of that. I think, uh, I think we don't. Uh, you know, I think Trump being president is unfortunately uh, appropriate. I think uh, we, we we deserve it. You know, it's uh, I'm not saying everyone deserves it, but as, as a nation as a whole, I, I mean, I, I think it makes sense. You know, with the with the the racism, the narcissism. You know, I think you add all those things up, and I think it spells out, unfortunately, where much of the country is at. So, uh, you know, got to fight against it, but it's it's not surprising. I don't think you know. Why um, can you detail some of the other than the narcissism, the racism and these other things, some of the other reasons you're not surprised that Donald Trump is the current president? And also, you can hear a lot of these amazing observations in America is the greatest country in the United States. All right. That's, yeah, that's my special on Netflix. Currently on Netflix. Yeah, there you um, go. And, you know, the special is thematically it's about I'm making fun of American exceptionalism, the whole idea that. You know, we're number one. We're taught that generally. I think most Americans are taught that since we're little kids. Um, and you hear it on the mainstream media and the news. You hear it from the Democrats. You hear it from the Republicans. You, you have to say the, it. You hear it from the news broadcasters. Matter that, of fact, if you that, say anything dissenting to that opinion, they tell yeah. you you're not you're not patriotic. And you right, need to yeah. Right, right. yeah, we're always taught that not only we're the greatest country in the world, the president is the leader of the free world. And I always wondered, like, how come we're the only country that gets to vote for the leader of the free world? How Weird. Come, how come all these other countries aren't? They're not voting. Aren't, aren't yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That, that is know. strange. It must be because we're number one. It must be because we're that, better than them. It has to be. So, or because they're just shitholes and they don't yeah, care. Yeah, yeah. Also exactly. a good point out of you. <laughs> so, you know, so when you have a, uh, like even just the other day, you know, when Trump was saying uh, how he's a genius and declaring himself a genius, and then people started pointing out how, well, actual geniuses don't go around calling themselves geniuses. Rarely. However, we're still calling ourselves the greatest country in the world. Mm -hmm. Maybe the countries that are the greatest in the world don't actually go around saying that constantly. You know, I'm going to give applause for that because that's absolutely <laughs> the truest words ever spoken. Like, Costa Rica doesn't run around being like, it's Costa Rica yeah. or nothing. Now, there are, now, it's a, you know, I look at it like almost like you look at sports. It's good to be confident. You don't want to be overconfident. That's right. You know, I think often this country's overconfident. So I think, you know, there were so many, like, of the Hillary voters out there, uh, there were so many of them that were, they were shocked when Trump won. Now, if you travel around the country, I don't think anyone should be shocked that Trump won. As soon as you get outside the cities, I mean, I mean, as soon as you get to South Jersey, yeah, yeah, it's, you get to Long Island, you get, you get to upstate, white sections yeah. of Queens. Yeah. You know, it, it's yeah. it's it's Trump signs everywhere. You know, so it's you know, and that and you know the the, the people being so sure Hillary is going to win. Uh, and, and and shock when Trump won again. That goes into the arrogance and the narcissism that is just. I think rampant throughout the country, yeah. you know, uh, and then you add that with, you know, white male supremacy power structure, and then uh, you get Trump, you know. So I, I also think, think you said that you said the thinking of it like a team, and that's something I always think about, is that people always question your patriotism when you doubt leadership in your country, but no one questions my fanship yes. for my favorite football team when I'm like, what are we doing? I yeah. don't I hate the coach. Get a new coach. He's yeah. terrible. Yeah. No, no, you're that's a great fan. That's yeah. called what you're supposed yeah. to do if you're yeah, a Yeah, you're fan. not supposed to just say you know, I accept if, it implicitly. Yeah, if you're zero seventeen every year, and you're supposed to be like, "Hey, this is the best coach." This is uh, no, that's not what we do. Coach. Yeah. Well, and then so. when you get to the actual numbers, right? When you get to yeah. like where we're ranked in education in the world, and where we're ranked in crime in the world, and where we're ranked in poverty in the world, yeah. uh, we're we number are one. number every category. one, guys. <laughs> every category. We're number not, one. Yeah, not, I don't know what you're reading, not. but trust me, it's number one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're number not. one. 
And and then also, if we're not number one in something as a nation, we generally kind of look at it as something that's not worth being good at. You mm. know, like if you look at men's soccer, you know, we're not good at that as a nation. So most of the country just sort of writes off. Eh, well. Soccer doesn't like matter. That. Soccer yeah, sucks like anyway. Anyway. sucks anyway. No, really no one loves soccer, but right. it's the most right, popular right. sport. When the women win the World Cup, everyone's like, oh, yeah, this is awesome. We this dominate women's soccer. You, you know, so it's like, <laughs> and like, like I remember I, I first started doing shows uh, in Europe about seven years ago, and that's when I started sort of, like, I've always been into this stuff, but it sort of became more clear uh, when you get to, like, sort of step outside. You know, when I, uh, it's almost like if you're in a bad relationship and you can't see it, but all your friends can see it, and they're yeah. like, why with that person? They treat you horrible. And you're like, no, they're cool. Uh, and then a few years later, you're out of it, and then you can look back and see what an idiot you were. Mm -hmm. uh, so when I started doing shows like in England and, and other countries, at first I was like, oh, I'm going to learn more about these countries, but I really started learning more about my own, you know? And, wow, it's uh, funny you say that. Yeah, because I was able to look Same at it from a distance. Same thing happened to me last year. I started mm -hmm. traveling a lot for work. Yeah. And, you know, J whether it was Japan, yeah. Korea, yeah. you know, the UK, um, talking to people from Nigeria, yeah. even really learning more about, like, Mexico and the economic structures of some of these other places. Yeah. You start to go, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Yes, yeah. they have some really bad things, but mm -hmm. so do we. Yeah, yeah. Like, when I was in London, I was shocked. I, was t I took a... You know, when I like going to, I like going to cities. I'm like a city guy. I love going to cities, and I love not doing touristy stuff. I like taking their subways. I like going to the grocery store and just, just, just walking around doing everyday stuff, and and then talking to people. And I took a cab. I remember I was taking a cab once in London, and I was talking to the guy, and the cabbies there only work eight hours a day, five days a week. Here in New York, they work six to seven days a week, 12 hours a day, and they keep the car running 24-7 right. just to make ends meet. And I was like, I, I was shocked that like, like you can just do that eight hours a day, and that's all you got to do. And you got like a wife and kids, and, and that's a enough. Life. You can feed a family. And, and that's yeah. enough. And then you can like, it's like shocking. You know, like everyone I know in the U.S. has got three, four jobs and just, just always hustling to to make rent and everything. So so it's interesting. It makes you sort of like re-examine things, you know, about, you know, what what we're doing and what other countries are doing. Do you think so. America is, is ready for this truth? Or are we getting farther down? Because it feels like that's people want to talk about the truth. That's a great About who we question. are in the world. Um, but I, think that's, I think that is the question, and I don't know the answer. I hope so. I, I think steps are getting... Uh, better like you said but I, I i think we're still a far away 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 from it i think most people want to view trump and this is one of the dangers of trump and in, in addition to like the deliberate dangerous the many dangerous things he does one of the dangerous things is i think there's a lot of people out there still who want to look at trump as just some sort of a a fluke you know like oh this isn't this isn't really us you know uh, and, and you say no, 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 no. It, it's us. This is this country, you know. Not not everyone in the country, but a big part of it, you know. But so, and I think it's important to acknowledge that well, and not and just look at him as this guy who's a fluke. Like some people say, well, Hillary got more of the uh, popular vote. Well, you know, most countries that are dictatorships, it doesn't matter if majority doesn't rule. You know, minority often does rule. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't need. Uh, the majority to uh, to run things. You Do you know? think there's a chance he can win a second term? I, I think if the election was today, he would win again. Yeah. The market's trading at record highs, guys. We live in. Yeah. Well, here's the thing I want to unpack yeah. with you. We live in capitalist America. Yes. Okay. Let's boom. We live in a place where people come and have come for centuries to have a better life, to have access to more material wealth. Right? That's what they come here for. Right. Right? Bring your spirituality. Bring whatever else you want to bring with you. But know that this country is about that money. Yeah. The market is trading at record highs right now. A year. Almost exactly a year. Yeah. Into Trump's presidency. And while you could run down whether or not he had sex with this porn star that he, you know, at, told her that she was beautiful and smart like his daughter before he had sex with a porn star. Uh. Uh, him grabbing people or alleging that he just grabs them by the pussy. Uh, racist remarks about Mexicans. Uh, calling country shitholes. Saying things about Haitians. Mm -hmm. Saying things about women. Mm -hmm. Saying mm -hmm. things about uh, Native Americans. I mean, you run down the list. 
never saying anything negative about white supremacy. No. Matter of fact, when that happened in Charlottesville, some fine people. Yeah. Right. Yeah, it was very quiet. You can run down all those things, and anybody that supports what's happening right now will point to the stock market. And even yeah. people that are against what Trump is right now, They'll right? be like, hey, the stock market's doing great. My bank account looks good, yeah. man. And most people I, in this country, I don't think, are in the stock market. So that, that really doesn't affect most of the people. No. Most people in this country- By, by numbers, by are, percentage. Are not in that. So it's, it's again, it, that's a stat that's feeding people who already have- a fair amount of money, at least. You right. Know? Uh, and then if you also if you look at Trump, it's like there's another reason why I, I'm I'm like a pessimist, but I'm a fighter, so I, I never give up. But it's like I don't, uh, you know, if you look at Trump, all the racist things he's done, I don't know, the past th 30 years at least, you know, uh, and you look at mainstream media, they're just starting to call him a racist. You know, well, in mainstream media, we've been, I mean, do, that, we've been doing it since he yeah, decided I, to run. Thank you for correcting me. Mainstream media is just starting to call him a racist. And, uh, you know, I, and I remember when, you know, I don't know, like six months into his candidacy after saying, you know, all these awful things, some people in mainstream media started going, well, you know, his comments just aren't funny anymore. And I'm like, well, you mean his first comments? When, when, <laughs> yeah, those when he, were funny. When, when he said uh, all Mexicans are rapists, you, you thought that was hilarious? Is that what you're telling me? <laughs> but it's like, so two years after you know he started his campaign, people, mainstream media are just starting to call him racist. So look how long it's taking people just to say that. Newspapers right. still won't call him a liar. You know, it's like, you, I'm like you, if you can't call a guy like that a liar, you're not dealing in... In truth, well, they yeah. well. See, the thing is, it's it's hard though. I will. I'll give the newspapers a bit of a break there because it is such a bold thing for a newspaper to put in print an accusation that someone's a liar, even though they b certainly believe he's lying. Right, but I'm saying, but their PCness or whatever that is is going to enable Trump. I think to still have a, a good shot at winning again. Well, I mean, there are places I know last week. Um, there were a few news outlets that I heard blatantly on the news say, call him a liar. They said the president Good. is li Don Lemon, I believe, was like, the president yeah. is lying. Well, Don Lemon racist. was also, the president is a racist. Yes. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. said the president is a racist. But he, you know, his fake news awards just came out and CNN's on like three of them. Did Don win anything? Um, Don Lemon. Yeah. Well, that's too bad. Yeah. He deserves something. <laughs> The fake news awards are out here, man. By the way, we, don't, we haven't taken a moment on the show to salute Don Lemon's turnaround. Y'all well, yeah, remember how it started, right? Yeah, well, when in Ferguson, when Talib Kweli was giving him the business in Ferguson, and hip-hop and black folks was like, Don Lemon's a, a effing coon and a clown. Now, if you notice, his afro's gotten a little bit bigger. <laughs> it has. I have noticed Have you that. looked at Don Lemon's that's afro lately? More. It's a yeah. little bit bigger. Oh, really? yeah. By the way, that's yeah. so not by accident. No, he's like, I'm black. <laughs> yeah, Let he this just, afro he, ring off. He, yeah. uh, it's, it just took a little black Twitter roasting for him to be like, you know what? Let me go. Let me... Let me figure out how to do this. Well, no, nah, and then the the president became racist. He was and like, it made black, it really easy, black right? power, black power, <laughs> black power. Yeah, no. Uh, here we are. The fake news awards, uh, courtesy of the president, Donald Trump. One, two, three, four. CNN uh, awards, and there is New York Times. One, two for the New York Times. One for ABC News, Time, Washington Post, and Newsweek. So basically, if you're a reputable news outlet. You the president it. has said that you're fake news. So did he do this all on Twitter? Um, I didn't look. I don't. I don't really look at his Twitter as much as everyone else because yeah. I feel like that's a scam. Yeah. I feel like he's a owner, a part owner, or owns a lot of stock or something in Twitter. He starts putting everything on Twitter to drive up its value because Donald Trump single handedly made Twitter important again. Uh, that's a good point. He's keeping it that way. Yeah. Yeah, and that's why Twitter's not going to get rid of him. By right, the way, you know? he, he doesn't. Well, that's where you know. You, well, because you and I are in a yeah. in a group chat. Yeah, yeah. Called the the what is it called the Decency Collective? Yeah, I don't know. I don't. I don't think, I don't think they want people telling that. But oh, we're know. not supposed to talk yeah, about yeah, that. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, why aren't I included? Yeah. I, I'm, I'm, you're not a decent human. <laughs> yeah, I've been I've been publicly decent also. Yeah, no, yeah. but it, but so the point is is that in there people are like, why won't Twitter get rid of him? Yeah. And on Twitter because he has people clamoring. Yeah. Into Twitter, but also he makes them money. You yeah. know. Of course, Can I, that's where capitalism. You know, I mean that that's a mild example of racism and capitalism working together. You know, but uh, you know, I think you know, 
op- oppression of human rights is always part of the main business model of capitalism. Yeah. You know, cause, well, because you gotta you gotta figure out how to get cheap labor, yeah, so that you can you know have higher margins on the other side, right? That's what so, it's all about. That's what prison labor is, yeah. You know, so it's uh, it's horrible, but that's so. Uh, do you get on is. stage on this Netflix special and basically depress everyone? Is that no, what no, happens? no? It's all comedy. You know, it's <laughs> got about it, got racism, it, sexism, it, mass it. incarceration, but it's a comedy. It's a comedy. <laughs> Yeah. There's a lot to cover. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot it's to a cover. Comedy. What's uh, the name of it again, Rosenberg? America is the greatest country in the United States. I mean, this is a true statement. Yeah, and, and you, by the way, it's finally true. You can't argue that. You can't argue. Do you ever get frustrated with uh, the same thing that's applied to the country to New York? Greatest city in the world. Yeah, greatest city I, in the world. It's the same thing. You never know. been. You've never been anywhere else, but yeah. you are sure New York is the greatest city in yeah. the world. I mean, it's a great city. Don't get me wrong. Are you sure lived, it's the greatest? I've lived here since '87, and the city has never been harder to live in than now. <laughs> why? Tell you say like, why? It's just, it's just falling apart everywhere. It's just. I mean, it's generally, uh, I guess, safer than it was. Yeah, but it's. The you know the the subways the roads horrendous the construction the construction everywhere the corporization of New York City is just uh, it's got this dull powerful numbing effect uh, you know the city's not as uh, in general not as interesting as it used to be it's not as rebellious as it used to be I, I look at so many of the people you know walking around Manhattan I'm like why do you guys live here man it, it's like what it's like if if you're not into something, you know, really interesting. No, that's not. Yeah, that's not that anymore. It's there's a there's a lot of just yeah, most of money. People, most of the people moving here now aren't. Uh, they're moving here with uh, very high paying uh, finance jobs. I mean, that's right. most people moving here now. It's true. Yeah, yeah. So it's just uh, it's it's weird. The city's totally changed. You know. And totally by the way, different. would you say that New York is a shithole? Come on. Parts are. No yes. way to not argue parts are. <laughs> yes and no. <laughs> yes, and no. <laughs> yes and no. It's uh but it's like I don't I don't know where to live in this city anymore. It's Well just, you're uh, are you currently homeless? I'm I'm technically you can make that argument that I am. <laughs> oh. Yes. Uh I haven't had an apartment since uh what is it, August thirty first. Uh people have been telling me to buy for years. So I'm, wait, where do you I'm live? Never owned. I'm staying at a little dinky hotel in Queens. Yeah. What part of Queens? Long Island City. I'm <laughs> okay. right next to... Close to uh, the city. I'm, yeah, I'm next to... Uh, it's in a very industrial part. I'm next to a cement factory, mm. a wood chip factory, oh. uh, a sheet metal factory, and an elevator parts place. Wow. So, and, and let me ask you this. And right across this, the street this, from the train station. This is a hotel, not tracks. a motel. Well, it's New York, so it's not a motel. So Got it's it. technically a hotel. Uh, and if it wasn't it, New York City, it would be a motel. motel. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, does this place have hourly rates? No, but oh, I, some right. of that I, still goes on a little bit. I think, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, but it's it's, it's tucked it, away enough where people could dash there for lunchtime. Theoretically, yeah. <laughs> you know, Judah, you're aware, and I say this with all due respect, as a as a great. You, I think it definitely used to be one of those. They've had new owners the past <laughs> few it, years, and I think it. they're really trying to turn it into something. Yeah. So, but there is some of that still does. But happen. you're aware yeah. that how do I say this delicately? Yes. Physically. Yes, you live in a, you operate in a space that's already close to homeless guy. That's a I know. that's well, a look by design. So if you well, it if is you, and it isn't. You know, <laughs> I, I, mean, I, I think I've I've kind of always been that way. But, but uh, well, you're one of those a, creatures that's so hairy that you couldn't keep up with the shaving and the haircuts. He gave up. My hair's I have a lot of testosterone, guys. It's you just know, it's, you know, a lot of a lot of men just can't relate to what I go through. <laughs> yeah. So. Um, but you know, I have a lot of respect for homeless people. I think they're 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 some of the toughest people. Psh, that and, is true. Uh, and is that why you're slowly but surely on your way to being there? Well, I'm I'm hoping to have a home, but uh, <laughs> I respect homeless people because uh, I think they're the only pro environment people out there. Very good I, point. Uh, you know, truly pro. If you think you're pro environment and you live indoors, I think uh, <laughs> you're a I th- fraud. I think you're fake news. Wow. You know, <laughs> you know, you're literally putting up walls all around you on all sides. So how do you think that makes the sun and the wind feel? Very good know? point. But and how you, do you? But if you live outside, that right. means you're one with nature. And no toilet. You're not wasting water every time you go to the no. bathroom. You know how much water that wastes? A ton. Yeah. Showers. Yeah. More waste. Yeah. 
all waste. Cleaning your yeah. <laughs> this is that's such a really good thought. I didn't yeah. even think about it that way. So. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, Judah Friedlander, and if he knows anything about telling lies and great marketing, you can read it on his shirt and his jacket. True. World that's champion. True. That's right. Of man. what we've never known. God, how did you? You've been you've been running that world champion thing for a well, long time. It's changed. You know, initially it was. Making fun of uh, show offs and people who are bragging all well, the it's time. It's very like America, though. It yes. still falls in line yeah. with the brand. Yes. This is very on brand for you. And it, um, it's like a satire on narcissism on some level, you know. And then over the years, there's still that. And then it's almost like it's become like a world. The world champion is not just this, this ridiculous bragger of all these amazing athletic achievements, it's almost like he's real. It's like a real life superhero. And then the world champion, if you look at world champion, I'm a champion of the world and the, the people of the world and the plants and the animals and the environment. So Everything. I'm fighting for the rights of humanity. The world's champion. Yes. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, United, what is it? America uh, is the greatest, greatest country in the United, in the United States. States. It's uh, Yeah, and the, the special that I did is... 84 minutes there's no little skits at the beginning or anything it's just it's all action it's just 84 minutes of straight stand up and I filmed I had I filmed it with no deal in place I just had a, a couple little cameras it's black and white it's real kind of raw bare bones and uh, I want it to feel like you're just sitting there in a little room uh, and uh, watching a show instead of this big huge production I went because I think stand up is a I think it's a small art form generally. It's you know, intimate, you know, kind of like jazz. Yeah, you know, it's not this this big spectacle, and so I wanted to film it in uh, just a real kind of a way. So it was what so, four people in the audience? No, no, packed audiences, okay. but it's all filmed at the Comedy Cellar. Oh. So you know, it's it looks they, small. They, they, it feels they, intimate. They, they have two rooms. You know, one seats the the original room seats uh, about one twenty five, and their their new room at the Village Underground seats about I don't know two fifty. So they're they're both filmed there. So it's a real small, you know, intimate vibe. So yeah. comedy seems to be in a great place right now on Netflix, and just everything's happening from Chappelle's stuff to Kevin Hart's stuff, your stuff. Um, I'm trying to uh, even uh, uh, Hassan Minaj. Yeah, you know, well, a lot of what's good about it is that because um, this is my first special. I've been doing stand up since '89, and I've turned them down several times over the years. How come? Uh, creative reasons and legal reasons. Uh, for years, there would always be, oh, there's some kind of subject you can't talk about, mm. certain words you can't say, oh, we got sponsors, you, you know, and I'm like, you know. I'm it's the one fucking thing, world champion. Yeah, you never, you don't tell yeah, me. Yeah, it's one thing if I'm going on like a talk show, I'm a guest on someone else's show, I realize they got their parameters. But if I'm putting out a special, that's me. You know, I'm not going to be censoring anything. I got it. And then legally, uh, they used to always have these contracts where they would not only own that film performance, they would own all the words that you said. And I'm like, you can't own what I wrote and the words that I said. Interesting. So I would turn them down, you know. And uh, so with Netflix and just online in general, it gives you a little bit more of artistic freedom and what you can do. And this special, if I pitched it to Netflix, I I, I think they would have turned it down because it, it looks so different. And uh, so I, I had to make it on my own. And fortunately, they uh, they bought it, you know. So, because um, the good thing about them is that they're worldwide. Yeah. And, uh, and you're the world champion. And it's 24 hours. That so the actually, world champion should be worldwide. Yeah, and, and available at all times. That's yeah. right. And the response from overseas has been ridiculous it's it's been great oh yeah because they're like thank you we're making fun of you also we yeah. need someone to laugh it's like with. uh <laughs> you know india so many people on twitter hit me up from india and stuff it's just it's cool you know well because so, they agree yeah they recognize america is the greatest country in the united yeah. states but that's they it. recognize that uh we're winners that's what it is yeah judah there it is judah freeland give it thank up you, man. check him out on Thanks netflix so